standalone APIC cluster is a new feature introduced in ACI 5.2 that allows you to have an APIC controller cluster remotely manage leaf and spine switches over a layer three network. The standalone APIC feature removes the requirement that APIC controllers must be directly connected to ACI leaf switches. An APIC cluster can be connected to any switch that has layer three connectivity to ACI spines over an IPN or interpod network. The main use case for the standalone APIC cluster feature is when there is a requirement that the APIC controllers must be placed in a secure zone and traffic between the APIC controllers and the leaf and spine switches may need to be inspected by a firewall. APICs in the standalone cluster will be part of pod zero. Only APICs can be in pod zero and you will not be allowed to add leaf and spine switches to pod zero. Fabric Discovery works like multipod, but for all pods, including pod one. There are no changes to fabric scale or multipod scale or the distance requirements between the apex and the leaf and spine switches. This remains 50 milliseconds round trip time. There are some limitations with the standalone APIC cluster feature. The standalone APIC cluster can only be configured during initial setup of the APIC using the setup script. Migrating from a directly connected APIC to a standalone APIC and vice versa is not supported. For existing fabrics that have directly connected APICs, migrating to a standalone APIC cluster involves erasing the configuration, rerunning the setup script, selecting the standalone option, and then re-importing the configuration. Going back from a standalone APIC cluster to a directly connected cluster will require following the same procedure. There is no mixed mode support. This means that you cannot have directly connected APICs and standalone APICs in the same cluster. Also, virtual pod and vAPIC are not supported. Before looking at the standalone APIC cluster configuration, let's first review the directly connected APIC cluster configuration in a single pod fabric. Here we have three APIC controllers directly connected to the leaf switches. The links between the apex and the leaf switches, as well as the links between the leaf and spines, are all running LLDP, and this is used for fabric discovery. During setup of the apex cluster, the TEP pool for the pod is entered. In this example, we have 10100-16 as the TEP pool. All apex in a directly connected apex cluster will have their fabric IP addresses assigned from this TEP pool and always starting from the first IP address, dot one. So here we have three APICs. These would be dot one, dot two, and dot three. APICs physically connected to the leaf switches use LLDP to discover the leaf switches and the remaining leaf and spines within the fabric. Now let's take a look at multipod fabric discovery for directly connected APICs. Again, we have TEP pool 10100-16, which is the first TEP pool configured during the APIC cluster setup. Pods two and three will use different TEP pools. The TEP pool 10100-16 is associated with pod one, which is considered the seed pod in a multipod fabric. Also notice that the third APIC or APIC three is now located in pod two. APICs will always maintain their IP addresses from the first TEP pool. Even though APIC3 is in pod two, it still uses the IP address 10103, which is from the TEP pool of pod one. Fabric discovery with multipod works by using DHCP relay in the IPN network to relay DHCP packets from the spines and remote pods back to the APICs in the first pod. Here we can see the spine in pod two is sending DHCP discover packets which are then relayed to the APIC in pod one. The APIC can then respond with the DHCP offer packet, configuration files, and allow spines in pod two to be discovered. After the spines in pod two join the fabric, LLDP is again used within that pod to discover the other leaf and spine switches. Pod three does not have an APIC connected. It's not required to have an APIC in a pod for fabric discovery. And here we can see that pod three will also be discovered by using DHCP relay in the IPN network. Now let's look at the standalone APIC cluster use case for a single pod fabric. Here we show three APICs connected to a layer three network remote from the physical pod. 
the APICs are not directly connected to the leaf switches. The APIC infra IP addresses are configured during the APIC setup. In this example, we show each APIC has an IP address in the same subnet, but it is also supported that each APIC can have an infra IP address in a different subnet. There is no seed pod in the standalone APIC cluster use case. The TEP pool for pod one is configured from the APIC UI after the cluster is brought up. Even for a single pod fabric, we still must configure a multi-pod infra L3 out so the spines in pod one can reach the apex remote from the fabric. The TEP pools for the pod for pod one, as well as the APIC pod zero, must be advertised within the IPN. There is no change in the configuration when adding additional pods for multi-pod or remote leaf switches with the standalone APIC cluster use case. The only difference is the APICs will not be assigned routable addresses for remote leaf connectivity. This is because the IP addresses configured for the APIC cluster during setup are already routable in the IPN. When configuring the standalone APIC cluster, the setup script will ask you to enter a VLAN ID for the fabric links. This is the bond zero interface on the APIC. This is always an active standby bond. If VLAN 0, which is the default value, is selected, there will be no VLAN tag on the bond 0 interface. The upstream layer 3 switch should have the APIC ports configured as access ports in this case. If a VLAN ID other than VLAN 0 is selected, this will form a trunk port on the bond 0 interface. The upstream layer 3 switch should be configured as trunk ports. If in-band management is required, you can add in-band management IPs to the APICs. In-band management connectivity will not go through the spines. So if there is a requirement to connect in-band management to the pod leaf and spine switches, you would create an L3 out in the management tenant and connect this L3 out from a leaf switch to the IPN. Now let's look at the configuration for the standalone APIC cluster. This is the setup script for APIC 1. We enter the fabric information as normal. This is a three APIC cluster. It's not a standby controller. This is the first APIC, APIC 1. And we say yes to the standalone APIC cluster question. We'll enter VLAN 0 for access port. Assign the IP address for the bond 0 interface, the gateway. And we say yes, this is the first APIC in the cluster give it the controller name and the infra VLAN and JIPO. We're not showing the management interface configuration. Now we're configuring APIC2. Again, give it the fabric information. Not a standby controller, but this is APIC2. Yes, it's a standalone. The only difference now is we won't say this is the first APIC, but we have to enter the APIC ID or IP address for APIC1. So enter an IP address of an active APIC, assign the name, the infra VLAN, and we're done. Again, we're not showing the management configuration. Now, after the cluster has been brought up, we'll log into the APIC. And the first thing to notice is that the APIC cluster is formed. So we can see all three APICs, they're active and available. This means that our layer three network is working. The APICs can communicate with each other, and when we look at the topology, we see that they're all part of pod zero. There is no other pod other than pod zero. Because we don't have a seed pod or pod one, we have to manually enter the TEP pool. This was not entered during the setup script. So we're adding a TEP pool for pod one. And now that the TEP pool has been added, we can use the multi-pod wizard to create the infra L3 out for pod one. So we'll go to the quick start and we'll select add pod and we'll run the multi-pod wizard. We'll enter the spine IDs. The spines have not yet been discovered, but we configure the spine IDs and IP addresses using the multipod wizard. This will tell the APIC what IPs to assign to the spines when they send DHCP requests over the IPN. So we know which interfaces connect to the IPN and we assign the IP addresses. Next, we configure the OSPF settings for the 
infra L3 out. We create a policy. We always use point to point links. So we're going to create a multi pod OSPF policy with point to point. We'll enter the other multi pod settings, such as the data plane TEP and router IDs for each of the spines. The data plane TEP is a slash 32, so we'll enter that. And that's it. We will finish, and this will create the infra L3 out. The spines sending DHCP requests can now be discovered, and the APIC can assign IP addresses once we allow those spines to join the fabric. So here, if we look at the nodes pending registration, we can see all of the spines and two of the leaf switches. Those are remote leaf switches. This is because the IPN is configured with DHCP relay for all of these devices, and they're sending DHCP discover packets that are being relayed to the APIC. So now we've added all of our switches. So we've assigned node IDs, node names to all of our leaf and spine switches. So we've gone through the fabric discovery. I didn't show that, but we've done that. And now we can see that the fabric has been discovered. And if we look at the topology, we see pod zero with three APICs, pod one with two spines and four leaf switches. And that's it for setting up the standalone APIC cluster you can now add additional pods or remote leaves the same way you would with a directly connected APIC cluster. Mm -hmm.